Ladies and gentlemen, this is Art Battle Online. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Art Battle Online. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's uh, a, a, a pleasure to be here. We have taken Art Battle from, as many of you know it, we do Art Battle in cities all across the world. We've recently canceled 70 events, though. These are uh, competition events that are leading up to the World Championships in Tokyo. Uh, national tournaments in India, Mexico, uh, the United States, Canada, Japan, uh, Australia, um, uh, European Championship. All of these events, unfortunately, due to the events that are unfolding today, have been postponed. They're likely postponed into the fall. But we have a fantastic opportunity, which is that we're all at home. The Internet seems to be okay, doing right for us, which means that we can connect with fans, with art lovers, with artists from around the world. We have... Uh, eight of them here tonight to share their competition pieces. These are 20-minute paintings. These artists have uh, com uh, submitted these paintings and shared them with us, and we are now going to share them with you, and you are going to be helpful to help us vote for the winner. Voting for the winner in two rounds, and those winners go on to higher levels of this online competition. We're having 64 artists down to just a single winner uh, in uh, over the course of the coming weeks. This is our fifth week. Um, and I have uh, tonight for you uh, two fantastic art battle commentators who are going to lead you through these rounds and uh, share a couple of insights into what these artists are up to. It's my pleasure to reintroduce um, art battle commentator Morgan Booth. She's also an artist uh, with us and has been the art battle uh, global tournament uh, advisor watching uh, the artists from all over the world uh, pour in with their submissions. Welcome, Morgan Booth. Hi, everyone. Great. Um, we'll hear more from Morgan in a moment. We also have with us Elias Emmanuel Anatolius. Elias is um, a prolific artist and an art battle competitor, and he also is one of Morgan's favorite people to chat with about art, and so we have him here tonight by video conference. Uh, Elias, welcome. Hi, super glad to be here. Great, fantastic. Uh, well, uh, listen, uh, you guys, in a, in a few moments, we're going to see last week's competition. Where we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to announce the winners. We're going to see a recap from last week. Uh, but in advance of that, uh, say hi, and uh, 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 let's get prepared for Art Battle tonight. Oh, man, last week was such a strong competition. I, I'm really excited to see you who has taken the winning crown from each round. Uh, in the first round, we had a U.S. battle, and the second round was international. Um, and all eight pieces were super, super strong um, and had a lot of great audience engagement. Oh, I'm excited to see it for the first time in the recap. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, we have that recap coming up right now. Let me just... Uh... Do a couple of things here, and here we go. This is uh, last week's uh, art battle for a week four. Here we go. Yeah, these artists just went uh, super high energy. Everyone was really, really colorful, um, and just it's amazing seeing all of these pieces that took 20 minutes go even shorter down into just 30 seconds. Um, wow. And we're going to see the winners of each round. On the top, we have the U.S. battle. On the bottom, we have the international. Um, and from round one was Dilcia Garan from San Francisco. And in round number two, it was Belinda Fireman from Calgary. Uh, two very strong pieces. Uh, both evolved uh, a lot throughout the battle and kept us guessing. Uh, Dilcia is known for kind of creating on the fly and uh, really layering her techniques. Well, congratulations to these artists. Uh, they are both moving on in the competition. Um, Elias, wh what do you think? Are you are you expecting uh, what are you expecting tonight based on what you saw last uh, from last week's battle? Well, those were gorgeous pieces, so good things. Great, fantastic. Uh, Morgan, let's uh, let's meet tonight's artists. What do you say? Can't wait. Okay, here we go. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Jin del Castillo, nací en Lima, Perú, 
me inspira en la naturaleza, mis experiencias y el mundo espiritual. Lo que me gusta de competir en Art Battle es que todos somos parte del proceso, tanto el que crea como el público que nos alienta y que puede ver cómo se está creando la obra. My name is Kaoru Nabe. I was born in Saga Prefecture, now living in Tokyo. Strange is my skill to be able to uh, paint quickly. Thank you. Bye. Hola, soy Iván Arevalo, nací en la ciudad de México, actualmente radico en Tijuana, Baja California. Para mí el arte es el hecho de poder conectarnos ideas y formas que surgen a través de nuestros pensamientos y poder así tener un diálogo. Muchas gracias. My name is Vera Didi. I'm a Ukrainian born visual artist. I want to give some incredible piece of art and rise up humanity to a higher level of vibration. Let's get started. I'm ready. Amazing. I love uh, seeing the inspiration behind these artists and I can't wait to see how it translates to the canvas. Yeah, that was a great background. Okay, and in five, four, three, two, one, let's paint. Okay, right off the bat, we're seeing uh, Ivan on easel number one laying down some heavy color. Yeah, it's always a little slow to get started. It's always hard to tell what's happening. But uh, you can see uh, Vera laying down the beginnings of a portrait there. And it looks like uh, Jean Del Castillo, I'm so sorry about the pronunciation of these names, is doing the same thing. Yeah, definitely like starting to sketch out and uh, just kind of get the proportions there. We've got, looks like kind of illustrative work going on on easel number three and number four. What do you think? Yeah, very slow, methodical, uh, very different approach being taken. Yeah, it's very cool to see these pieces in their very beginning stages when you really don't know what's going to happen with them. Absolutely. And uh, especially from both of us having experience in art battle, we're so used to being at ease ourselves and not being able to see uh, the beginning stages of the painting. So it's really cool kind of getting that insight. Yeah, absolutely. It's true. And you can see two different approaches to the portrait happening simultaneously, which is pretty cool. You can see uh, someone blocking in um, the sort of more general shapes uh, versus someone going straight for the line work, the detail. So that's two uh, very different, almost opposite approaches to a portrait. So let's see how they continue to develop. Yeah, Vera is super confident with the way that she's laying it down and going for kind of like an illustrative approach. And Jean is really considering the proportions that she's got going on in the portrait. Um, and Ivan, we're only two minutes in and Ivan's got so much work down. Yeah, he's almost covered that canvas and uh, layering those colors on looks like maybe a landscape and crew. Uh, uh is doing fantastic brushwork there those are really beautiful uh kind of calligraphic um brush strokes that have this very cool textural effect yeah like beautiful like undulating kind of pattern and you can see that she's watered down her paint a little bit so you're getting kind of a gradation effect yeah gorgeous I know that we're only like three minutes in at this point, but uh, I'm already loving Karu's and I, if she did the whole painting like that, I'd be happy. It's so good. Uh, yeah, I, and I'm blown away uh, by how fast all of these painters are are going at it. Are we, yeah, we're only a few minutes in here. Yeah, we've got Vera already kind of establishing a sense of movement uh, with the hair coming off of the figure. Yeah, and uh, the other portrait painter, uh, John Del Castillo, is starting to add some some heavier shadows there. 
Yeah, giving us kind of like, I'm getting like creepy vibes from it, but you know, in like a good way. She's using um, like washes to tint and to uh, establish like depth and contour and stuff instead of uh, going for paint, like instead of mixing the paint. Yeah, it's a very uh, a bit of a tented beginning compared to compared to Vera, but that's how this kind of method of portrait painting or painting goes. So now it seems like he's kind of hitting his stride. It's going to be cool to see where that goes. And uh, Yvonne, on the other hand, is adding something in the background that I didn't expect at all. Yeah, or totally. in the foreground. Sorry about that. Yeah, totally unexpected from uh, Yvonne. Like, he's kind of known for going for a little bit more of a surrealist approach. So working with kind of like natural landscapes um, and then throwing in some surrealism into the mix. So it'll be cool to see where this totally. piece goes. Totally. Just as you said that, I got a little bit of Magritte uh, vibes. Oh, totally. Especially with the composition and this uh, this kind of face maybe emerging from the center yeah yeah i love the color choice too in the face yeah he's got that warmth playing off of the kind of like green field uh color field behind it and uh kaoru right at the next easel has really created something on the bottom of the canvas that's pretty stunning to look at and starting to move upwards. And you can see that she's going for uh, like the, the spattering technique, which is usually something that we would see as a finisher. So it'll be cool to see the way that she integrates that into the painting. Voting's open. Um, yeah, and, so many different approaches. And Jean, well, uh, we're sure. getting a huge sense of like, depth already uh, coming from Jean's portrait and I like the way that she's situated this compositionally uh, in that she's kind of shifted it over from center and is now kind of radiating this figure into the rest of the canvas. Yeah, I, uh, I wasn't sure whether he was going to end up doing a traditional portrait or whether it was going to turn into something kind of uh, much more expressive, but I'm glad it went in this direction. It looks uh, it looks really cool. And still 13 minutes to go, so there's a lot that can still happen with these pieces right now. I mean, the, uh, the, the make or break decisions uh, may not have happened yet at all, so. That's such a good point, so. uh, the make or break decisions as we're getting into kind of the uh, the end of the first half, uh, which is only 10 minutes. Um, and that's a rapid amount of time to be making these decisions. Um, when you approach Art Battle, do you go in with a plan or are you working on the fly? Oh, I actually, uh, I, I almost forgot it was 10 minute rounds because I'm so used to when oh, it's I... 20 minutes, but we're at 10 now. Oh, okay, right, right. Oh, okay, so it's the same structure. No, yeah. you know, to be honest, um, I've gone in with a plan, and I've gone in without a plan, and, you know, you take your plan in there, but in 20 minutes, there's a lot that can happen, and um, when you don't have time to course correct in the way that you might when you're at home... You know, a plan might turn into no plan pretty quickly over the course of uh, a live painting session. Yeah, you really have to work on the fly and uh, and kind of paint behaves in a different way on a time setting too. Like it's you're if you're not used to working wet on wet, then uh, well, you better get used to it. One advantage I think the artists uh, do kind of have, I don't know if it's an advantage or a disadvantage, but it's its definitely different conditions to operate under, um, is being at home, I would feel that maybe the adrenaline might be a little bit less intense, but uh, there's also a focus that comes out of 
that and having the physical presence of so many people. But uh, then again, pacing in front of people virtually um, is, I mean, it's, it's just as cool. I don't know if it produces exactly the same effect or the same rush, but uh, back to these paintings, which are really coming along. Look at Vera's, uh, this spatter, this huge, uh, awesome, aggressive spatter. Yeah, I love that yellow, just uh, taking over the uh, composition. Uh, Really kind of taking us into even more of a pop art kind of realm, I feel. Yeah, those light colors and that uh, confident line work. And then depth being added to the face um, in, uh, in Jean's portrait right at the next easel it's looking really good more of those washes that you were talking about being applied and a really beautiful uh technique that she's using there in uh just creating the depth with these washes and we are now officially at the halfway point for this round uh voting is now open If you are watching and you want to vote and support these artists, please do so in the Art Battle app. You can find the app um, in the App Store or on Google Play for Android. Um, All of these pieces will also be up for a silent auction. So if you are falling in love as you're seeing them being created, uh, please bid early, bid often. Wow, look at that color going on to Vera's portrait. That's amazing. And I... Was that a paint marker, I think? Yeah, it looks like it. I'm loving the way that uh, the colors are bleeding into each other. Yeah, and uh, Kaoru is taking a very illustrative approach to the top of the the canvas. I still can't tell what it is, which, I, which is awesome, which I love. I love not being able to tell like right up until very close to the end what's what exactly is happening being kept in suspense but definitely looks like she has a plan or if not those are very confident beautiful flowing brush strokes that are happening over there yeah there's this real sense of uh reveal coming from Haru's painting uh she's just creating this like she's got these florals going on um with this beautiful like red uh speckling and then i'm not sure if it's plant or animal uh emerging from the top um and yeah and sorry and ivan uh ivan is really uh grounding this this uh, portrait into water now. Yeah, no, I was just about to say it looks incredible. Um, and talk about tossing in those surrealist elements. Uh, Ivan is not disappointing. This is very uh, similar to his studio work in that it's incorporating that kind of naturalist uh, background and then something that's totally unexpected. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it looks like water might be a theme as well, maybe. But um, a gorgeous, surrealist painting. I can't believe these paintings have only taken like seven minutes so far. Uh, we're at, I think, 13 minutes, but still, that is... Uh, 13 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that it was seven <laughs> minutes remaining, but... Yeah, these uh, these pieces are coming together really quickly. Um, I haven't seen any action on Vera's in... Oh, she's going in, uh, tightening up the ear a little bit. Um, but it seems that she's kind of slowing down on her painting. Uh, she might be... Yeah, maybe having covered a lot of the, the canvas, I think mm-hmm. uh, her choices are probably a little bit more limited now. Maybe... She's doing a bit more reflecting, but still getting in there with that drippy paint marker. And uh, I really like that Jean, at first, I thought those were cracks that were appearing around 
the central face and now they look more uh like branches of a tree but i think they're kind of evocative of of both which i like but again it's it's very interesting to see the evolving nature of all of this stuff and avon is mashing in some darker uh some some shadows and darker parts into this portrait which is looking really good it's going to make it pop a little bit yeah he's done a great job um so far with color and in a more subtle way like these are all kind of toned out um and i love that he has this warmth in the face that is directly contrasted by the green in the water um, and he's really paying a lot of careful attention to uh, detail in the way that the light is hitting the face. Also, layering those colors um, is not easy in the time that, <laughs> that is given. Absolutely. And Haru, uh, we're seeing this kind of like bird-like creature, maybe, uh, emerging, and it's just so stunning and uh she's really creating her own world here and i love the way that she's incorporated this kind of pattern of uh the waves and the swirls that we saw early on yeah they're kind of reflected in the feathers of this water phoenix or whatever is going on it's definitely stimulating to the water. imagination, but yeah, that's really coming to life. Water Phoenix, I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna take us on a little tour of what we've gone through so far. Um, on easel number one, we have Ivan Aravelo from Tijuana, Mexico. And we've seen this piece go uh, evolve pretty rapidly, actually. He established um, a landscape only in the first few minutes and now has introduced this kind of uh, surprise surrealist element of a portrait um, with some sort of mysterious object levitating above the head. Um, on easel number two, we have Karu Nabe from Tokyo, Japan. Um, and her approach has been just so much fun to watch uh, so far. We've seen her create these like beautiful undulating uh, lines of like waves with washes um, and then really keeping us guessing by introducing this uh, illustrative character on top. On easel number three we have Vera DG from Karkarov, Ukraine uh, and Vera has thrown us so many curveballs with this painting. It's been uh, really really cool. So we saw her kind of start with an illustrative approach of a female portrait and then surprise uh throw a bunch of paint onto it and the painting is now continuing to paint itself through the drips uh interacting with each other on easel number four we have jean del castillo from liam from lima peru and jean uh has started to evolve this painting in a really interesting way she's gone uh washy and is doing a totally monochrome painting, uh, treating this work almost as if it's watercolor. Um, she's really expanded this piece from the center. And um, we have about three minutes remaining. Elias, who are you wow. vibing with right now? Oh, it's a tough choice. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of vibing with all of these, to be honest. Especially watching them just go from a blank canvas to this, it's hard not to uh, kind of root for all of them. Absolutely. And also keeping in mind that uh, these artists are all at home in their studios uh, and have decided to take the time to dedicate a rare piece of canvas uh, for us to enjoy. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, and hopefully some of these canvases are going to be in collectors' homes. Absolutely. Bidding's open, uh, bids coming in for sure. Particularly looking at Karu's. I, I feel like I could just stare at that all day. Yeah, to be honest, I could probably put any of these in my, in my place. I, I'm really liking what's going on with Yvonne's on the top of the head. I thought that was going to be an explosion, but now it's uh, it's kind of like a, a spring explosion. There's a lot of color happening in there. 
Yeah, it's almost like wildflowers emerging from this mind space, which I think is a really it, lovely uh, thing to kind of hold on to in this moment. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, probably probably the most dynamically transforming painting, I, I think, so far in terms of what I thought was going to be happening with it versus what actually <laughs> transpired. Yeah, tons of beautiful kind of surprise elements in this round. Um, and we have just under one minute remaining. So if you are watching and you want to vote for these artists, please do so in the Art Battle app. You can get the app on uh, the App Store or in Google Play. And every vote counts, and these artists are counting on your votes. So please vote uh, and bid on these paintings. You can see the votes and in the green bars just on the, the screen finishing now. Finishing touches coming in, just these little tightening marks coming in. Uh, as these artists round the corner. And I think that Vera finished some time ago. Yeah, it, it almost does seem like that, yeah. Which is a bold move, Vera. Go, Vera. Okay, and <laughs> in five, four, three, two, one, brushes down. Whoa, 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 what an incredible Wow, that was a round. really strong round. Really? I'm feeling invigorated. Yeah, absolutely. Right, yeah, that what was, was beautiful. What was the biggest standout moment for you? Uh, I think for me, it was um, watching Yvonne's painting evolve, uh, just because I thought it was so many different things. At first, I thought it was a landscape, and then I, it, I thought it was kind of like a, a, a darker surrealist painting, and then uh, it had that kind of thematic turnaround with the flowers in the end. So that was a good highlight for me, but all of them were pretty stunning. Absolutely. It's so it's so amazing uh, seeing the process at work uh, because we often like as viewers we just get to see a piece in its totality and we don't necessarily know how the artist arrived there. So it's it's great seeing kind of the thought processes and the planning work that goes into each stage of these paintings. All right. Well, as you can see, oh, here I am. Right, where's me? Where's me? Uh, there we go. Uh, as you can see, the votes are coming in. The bids are coming in. Both voting and bidding are going to be open until Sunday. All right. And um, after an incredible first round, our international round, we are going to get ready for a round two. Um, uh, as a reminder, the voting and the auction both close on Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern. So you can share the recaps of this video. Our YouTube channel is awesome. Go check it out all the full interviews and share that with anyone that you want to vote uh, because those votes count. Uh, last week it was a very close vote and uh, we were very happy to have those winners but hey you never know so get out there and Morgan what have we got? Let's meet the artist for the second round. My name is Tyler Pentland. I currently live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada but I grew up in Penticton. I draw a lot of inspiration uh, for my work from nature and the paint itself being very uh, visually interesting, almost 3D sometimes. My name is Jolene Velate. I currently live in Hamilton, Ontario. I draw a lot of inspiration from nature. There's a lot of color and patterns in nature that we don't necessarily see. There's a lot of beautiful things that can be painted. My name is Grace Petty. I'm currently living in Nanaimo, British Columbia. To stay inspired, I just make sure that I'm constantly consuming different media, different artwork, constantly seeing new things. Thank you. My name is Christine Coutier. I currently live in Kelowna, British Columbia, but I grew up in Quebec. I'm totally inspired by the colors of the sunset and the breathtaking um, landscapes of the Okan Valley, Okanagan Valley when I travel. Thank you. All right, and in five, four, three, two, three, two one. one. Let's paint. All right, and we're seeing these artists kind of off to the races already, uh, and we're not even 10 seconds in. 
seems like we've got uh, on the first three easels, kind of more of a tentative approach. And then Tyler is going right in there with this blue. Yeah, really expressive brush strokes too. Love that. Yeah, Tyler is just bringing the bringing the energy. Um, and but yeah, it looks like it, I was gonna say an even more tentative approach than uh, any of the canvases in the last round. It looks like people are taking their time. Yeah, maybe a little bit more of kind of like careful uh, planning, especially that we're seeing that from Jolene. Uh, she, we can see that she's uh, doing quite a careful sketch. Um, I'm not sure what it is yet though, as it's uh, kind of like a tan color and it hasn't quite emerged. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, sometimes it's necessary to get your bearings when you get in front of the canvas before you kind of charge in there. Unless you you have a you have a very fixed idea or or an energy that just can't be stopped, which uh, looks like both of those things might be said about Tyler so far. I think he he probably has some idea, but there's certainly a lot of energy going on in those breast strokes. Totally, we're getting kind of different uh, compositional approaches on each of these canvas. We've got uh, Christine really working from the bottom corner, uh, creating this kind of like washy, uh, effect. Um, Grace seems to be sketching from the outside, which is a cool technique that we haven't seen so far. Uh, it seems like to me that she might be creating an outline uh, and doing her, a flat background color first. Um, and oh, Tyler looks like he's starting to put in some sort of uh, drawing over top now. Yeah, that, that looks... Um... That looks super abstract. It's really cool already. <laughs> I love seeing uh, very abstract pieces. So, I, which is which is good if you like watching the 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 indeterminate stages of a painting because everything is pretty abstract. It looks like uh, Jolene is solidifying that sketch into what looks like a tree i think that you're right i think it's kind of a tree reaching into the sky yeah and uh this really nice pink wash as a background for for uh something is um is coming together for sure for grace yeah the uh it's a really beautiful color and I can't uh, determine at this point what the, maybe it's a figure um, or an animal is going to be emerging from this painting. We're not quite sure yet. Um, and that's part of the joy of live painting, the element of discovery. Yeah, it's almost like a Rorschach test. Oh, true, true. Um, and Christine, I'm already really loving what she's got going on uh just the the way that she's choosing her palette um these beautiful like washy soft pastel -y colors are uh, already working for me yeah that absolutely looks like watercolor and reminds me of working in in watercolor uh, except for right at this moment when i said that which is no longer true oh you mean yeah, uh in the the thicker application that she's going for now yeah yeah which is really cool to see uh to see some very strong brush strokes being laid down over such a washy background and it looks like she's kind of fading them out a little bit just to fit them into the the softer textures that are going on around yeah really uh the way that she's created these soft lines um, of like super flat washy color and now going in with a uh, texture in a much more aggressive way, but still within this softness. Um, and uh, with Tyler, we're seeing, uh, I think a bot, uh, I'm getting Star Wars vibes. Um, and he's layering this white right over top of that aggressive blue that he put down 
So all of the mixing uh, that he's doing and all, and it looks like he's starting to use that to create his shading is that he's actually working with the color underneath the white to tint it. Yeah, it's a really cool approach and I really like how it keeps the sketchy background there. I'm a big fan of sketchy backgrounds in painting. Yeah, me too. I love something that holds a lot of energy. Um, and even though he's tightening up um, in this figure, this bot that he's got uh, going on, he's still maintaining that kind of raw energy. Yeah, totally. Um, and with Jolene, we're getting this like dabbing of what looks like autumnal leaves. Yeah, it's a much more illustrative uh, vibe for sure. Definitely reminds me of many illustrations. I I'm really impressed by the way that Jolene has uh, approached this compositionally, uh, in from like a perspective point, because usually you wouldn't be seeing the tree, uh, at least in a painting, from the bottom up. But that's really how we're seeing it in life. Like it makes me think of sitting in the park, uh, reading a book, and looking up. Yeah, or maybe as a kid, maybe that's what uh, gave me a more illustrative vibe as well. And with Grace, she's starting to fill in this negative space that she had going on, um, but the colors are quite similar to each other, so I'm not quite sure how to differentiate that yet, but I'm interested to see how it emerges. Yeah, super similar. It's hard to tell whether she is giving herself maybe uh, an outline that we're not seeing that she's going to elaborate um, earlier on or sorry later on or whether she decided to change the composition entirely and simply make that a part of the background now and have these two sort of smaller shapes interacting in a more abstract way rather than creating sort of a, a figure in the foreground uh, for as an anchor point. And part of the difficulty of uh, creating live in this way is that we're so used to creating for ourselves in our studios and we have a really clear uh, idea of where a piece is going. Um, and then when you're doing it live, uh, the audience is on this kind of mysterious journey with you. Um, and so you might know where it's going, but we're all still figuring it out. Uh, yeah, that's a great point. And also, like I said, plans can change. So, um, and I've definitely participated in art battles where I went in with one idea and then I made a decision that's just made that initial idea impossible to execute and so I changed course midway and wound up flowing into some different territory that's kind of almost like sort of like the painting equivalent of avant-garde jazz, where you're just mm -hmm. like filling space with color and working very much off intuition. And that can be as mysterious and strange to the person painting as it can be to the person watching. So it's always difficult to know what degree of of that is happening versus uh, a degree has been planned by the, the painter. Yeah, what degree of uh, improv versus what was planned. Um, and it's all, all of these different factors between the audience and the artist. You're totally right. Um, and I think that that's pretty evident in uh, the way that Christine is approaching her piece. Um, she's typically known to be doing abstract work and this is evident here, um, but I really see her working with the piece um, and building it organically. Yeah, actually, uh, in terms of where the textures and, and darker, um, more vibrant areas are, are falling, we saw her 
put down paint and then manipulate it into the backgrounds a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, and then kind of go for these very much bolder textures on top, maybe once once the composition had come together a little bit more. But yeah, it definitely seems to be happening on that more abstract level or intuitive level. Yeah, just and go ahead. both uh, Tyler and Jolene are pretty much uh, well into their concepts and really developing very strong images. Um, and we are just about at the nine minute mark. So voting is open for all of these pieces. Um, so if you are loving each of them as they are evolving, please support these artists by uh, voting. Every vote counts. You can vote in the Art Battle app, which is available in the App Store or on Google Play. Uh, these pieces are also up for silent auction. I think that Jolene, uh, her technique is really driving home this textural component. Uh, she's done a lot in terms of perspective and composition and creating distance um, and height for this tree. And now we're getting uh, a really strong focus on texture. Yeah, the Palatina is a great way to lay down texture for, uh, for, for painting fast really put down a lot of paint extremely fast so i think that's definitely working in her in her favor her and tyler seem to be really uh kind of suited to the approach of working fast in in Mm -hmm. terms of developing an image that can read well um grace is uh is going back to some of the figurative elements at least possibly that that I thought she was going to be working with from the beginning but it, if not she's adding much stronger elements and the painting is starting to feel a bit more grounded now oh for sure yeah I'm seeing uh, this kind of like Marie Antoinette vibe hair this like beautiful cotton candy kind of palette and color um, and maybe uh, some like folds of a skirt Um, It's feeling very romantic so far. Yeah, that really, that really took a while to come together. Uh, And there are seven minutes left, so I am wondering to what degree uh, all the painters are going to be able to pull off their compositions. Yeah, it really starts to, uh, starts to get crazy kind of as the minutes uh, are winding down because it's you're getting to this point of either trying to rush and uh, finish your piece and bring it to the vision that you had starting out, or you're having to hold back from overworking it. Because even though you only have 20 minutes, it can be really easy to overwork a live painting. I know I've done it. All right, um, we're getting uh, voting and auction open. The voting is, uh, we're just getting those images up. We'll be uh, right there. Uh, give us a couple of moments. Um, and Christine Got just it. has this beautiful uh, textural element that I wasn't expecting. Like she brought it in fairly early on, but with the establishment of the super soft color palette, um, I wasn't expecting the uh, the kind of sharper textural contrast to that, which is something that uh, I'm really digging. Um, and speaking of texture, Jolene is really honed in on uh, creating the bark of what looks like a birch tree uh, and is kind of mixing and swiping these uh, this white-ish color into the brown. Um, and Tyler has uh, got us going on with this blue that is just jumping uh, out and creating a really active environment for this robot. Yeah, and I think uh, one of the challenges that they might be starting to get into could be around that area of overworking because if there's five minutes left and the compositions are so established, you want to 
be careful really about what happens from this point on because a lot of strong decisions have already been made um i think uh christine can probably keep this piece evolving for you know forever probably um i'd watch it Grace actually yeah <laughs> so uh, grace seems to be almost on the perfect timeline for the 20 minute uh art battle round length if she can take the elements that she's put out so far and resolve them in a way that's satisfactory to her, then I think she could kind of be on the perfect timeline. I think so too. I think she's got a good uh, kind of segmentation of steps going on. Um, I'm gonna take us on a little tour. At easel number one, we have Christine Coultier from Kelowna, BC. Um, and we've really seen this piece emerge um, in such a gentle, uh, way with a really soft color palette that then introduces these uh, harsher textural elements that kind of play together musically. Uh, in easel number two, we have Grace Petty from Nanaimo, BC. Um, Grace has really thrown us a lot of surprises with this piece um, and has taken some interesting uh, text or interesting approaches in terms of establishing the drawing and the way that this piece has emerged. Um, we've had in the last few minutes some real pops uh, bringing this composition home um, and really tightening up it thematically. At easel number three, we have Jolene Vellante from uh, Hamilton, Ontario. And Jolene really has done a lot of work compositionally and uh, from a perspective point on this piece to bring height into this tree um, and then has created quite a significant focus on texture within the bark um, and the leaves. On easel number four, we have Tyler Pentland from Calgary, Alberta. Um, Tyler went hard right away with a really bold strategy of creating uh, this field of color that kind of explodes into the edges of the canvas um, and then surprising us with this robot and using uh, the white on top of the blue to create this, this shading. Um, and we are two minutes and 30 seconds remaining. Voting is open. You can vote in the Art Battle app. Great. And uh, yeah, all these pieces are coming together pretty fast as we're in the, the last couple of minutes here. And uh, it looks like Tyler is kind of working and reworking different parts of the painting at this point. Um, Jolene looks to be adding the, ba the background currently, which um, has to go pretty fast at this point. I wonder if it was a late decision on the fly uh, or if it was always meant to be there. Yeah, you never know. We'll only, only she knows, um, but it's unexpected, but I think it does a lot to ground the piece. Oh yeah, absolutely. It feels like I'm lying on my back on the on the ground of a park or something like that. Absolutely. Fall. I just want to be in the grass with a book. And that's what this painting makes me feel. Oh uh, yeah. Um and Yeah, and uh Grace's painting is definitely definitely gives me some of those Ruby Antoinette vibes that you were talking about earlier. That's kind of that uh that hair is pretty much the, the anchor point of the of the piece. And it does kind of have this energy as if it's a figure dancing. Yeah, or in like a, a Victorian fainting couch. Like this, uh, this piece to me is like, if sorbet was a person, it's like all of those <laughs> beautiful sorbet colors of like strawberry and orange and, and lemon. Um, and it's just, it's bringing a lot of like, like sweet and kind of romantic uh, vibes to me. Love it. And we are hitting the home stretch with only 15 seconds remaining. Um, just a reminder to everyone, if you are watching now, uh, please vote in the Art Battle app. These pieces are also available for silent auction. Uh, four, three, two, one. Brushes down. Okay, a lot of uh, a lot of 
really different approaches, um, quite an array of uh, techniques in this round. Yeah, absolutely. Overall, I would say uh, it seemed like the the painters might not have been as confident as the the uh, previous battle. But as we were talking about, there are so many challenges that come up live. Um, so I think it's incredible to see how these paintings evolved over time. And uh, that kind of ability to make decisions on the fly, uh, as you were saying, and I'm I just watching all of these pieces emerge and come together and different uh, strategies from heavily planning um, to doing some more intuitive kind of abstract work. Um, really a lot of different elements coming together uh, represented across four pieces. Yeah, for sure. It get, it gets into that whole painting jazz thing, which I won't go off about again. But <laughs> <laughs> really, really cool experience to see these come together. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Elias, I want to say a huge thank you to you for joining us uh, as a commentator tonight. Your thoughts are so valuable and we appreciate them. Oh, it's such a good time. Thanks for uh, having me. All right, well, that is our battle uh, of this tournament, we, uh, week five. Uh, as a reminder, the voting and auction are open until Sunday. Uh, we're also going to be showing you some studio works on the screen now. Uh, we'll be in the chat. Some artists are in the chat. Come and say hi. If you want to compete, artbattle.com slash artists. All the information is there. We would be very happy to have you. Uh, we're going to keep doing this uh, for the duration. So thank you so much, Morgan. And thank you, Elias. It was a pleasure to have you both on the show tonight.